Hi, Year 9, Mr. Tepe here to walk you through your next lesson of Year 9 Humanities. Uh, so this lesson we are looking at different systems of government and human rights. So how different systems of government, whether they are a democracy or an autocracy or a monarchy, how they address human rights issues. And then we're going to be uh, comparing and assessing two nations. So we're looking at China and America as our case studies, and we're looking at how they've responded to and how they've managed human rights. So, in civics and citizenship, you will examine civics, which is the first half of our unit looking at politics, and citizenship, so global issues like pollution, climate change, uh, terrorism, etc., or human rights. <laughs> Systems of government have different responses and management of national and global challenges. So because of the different uh, structures and features of different systems of government, there are different people who have different powers. So in a autocracy, one individual or a small group of people have the power, therefore they can do whatever they want when it comes to human rights challenges. In a democracy, in theory, um, there is a separation of powers. So the states have some rights, uh, the national uh, leader has some rights, whether they're a pri prime minister or president, and they have to answer to the people because the people elected them. So in theory, how they deal with human rights is going to be a bit different because who has the power, what power they have, and how they can use it is a bit different. So to assess the effectiveness of government systems, uh, we will be examining and evaluating how two different nations have managed recent human rights crises. So we're kind of looking at uh, some, well, I guess it's connecting to year eight civics <laughs> where you looked at human rights, but really I'm trying to get you in this lesson to look at some current events. So I thought instead of looking back into the history of you know when Australia was founded, et cetera, et cetera, we'd look at something happening in 2020. So you guys know a little bit more about the world around you. Uh, in 2020, both China, which is a autocracy, so one individual, uh, Xi Jinping, has the majority of the power in China. And in America, which is a democracy with elected officials, uh, both of these countries have experienced human rights protests and violence. This lesson will explore these issues and interpret the similarities and differences uh, between the government responses. So the first case study we're looking at is China and the Hong Kong protests. Uh, the relationship between China and Hong Kong is complicated and I can't fit it into one slide. <laughs> but uh, what you need to know is that Hong Kong was historically part of China. So it used to be part of China. There was a war, Hong Kong was given to the British uh, over 50 years or so. Uh, under British rule, Hong Kong kind of developed into their own nation with their own system of government, culture, and life. They are uniquely Hong Kong. They're not British, they're not Chinese, they're Hong Kong. But they're still historically part of China. So China obviously wants to get their mates back into the country. Hong Kong wants to do their own thing. In June 2019, China introduced a proposed law that would provide China with greater legal authority and power over the Hong Kong citizens. So that was a bit of a concern, because initially China were saying that uh, you're still part of China, but we'll let you do your own thing. And then this law came along, and people saw this as, oh no, they're going to be trying to take control. <laughs> they're trying to take the power from Hong Kong and put it into China. Uh, this sparked some protests that started again in June 2019, and they're still occurring now in August? July. July. <laughs> July 2020. Um, Hong Kong protesters are demanding individual freedoms and human rights, which are features of a democracy. However, the Chinese government are refusing to meet the demands of dangerous criminals. And that's one thing you'll see in both China and in America, when people start demanding individual freedoms and human rights, when people start protesting, they are often labeled as dangerous because they're upsetting the national government. They're upsetting the system of government. They're upsetting power. Therefore, if you're not helping the government, you're an enemy. You're not an ally, you're dangerous, and you must be a criminal. If they are actually criminals, if they're actually dangerous, I'll let you guys decide when you watch the video on the next slide to complete our lesson activities. So you've got one video here, eight minutes long. Hong Kong protests and China national security law explained. I love some of these visuals from the protests though. Uh, you can see in this one, for example, some America flags, some British flags. That's a reference to these Hong Kong people looking to democratic countries demanding democracy. So they're trying to appeal to people in America, in Britain, to support their cause. And then you've got some of the military, some songs.
songs of signs. <laughs> I'm tired, clearly. Some of that violence I mentioned. Anyway, so what I'd like you to do for the first part of this lesson, click on that link, and just watch the eight minute video here about the Hong Kong protests by BTN Behind the News, an Australian publication. Cool, so that's case study one. Case study two looking at the US uh, race or anti-race protests happening in 2020. So on May 25th, 2020, a um, African-American by the name of George Floyd died as a result of police brutality during an arrest. This incident has led to unrest, uh, so not happy people, angry people, <laughs> across the nation and the world. So people have seen what's happened in America and it set off protests worldwide because there are similar issues of police brutality, of racial discrimination, of civil rights around the world. So this isn't a uniquely US issue, but this is what started it. The death of an unarmed African American from police brutality was the latest in a series of incidents where minorities died at the hands of police with no consequences for those involved. This has been happening for years and years and years and years and years in America and around the world, really. You're seeing minorities, uh, whether they're ethnic, religious, or race, racial minorities, dying or dis being discriminated against or being uh, brutalized by the police. And as a result of that, nothing's happened. There's been no change from the government, despite people wanting change, and a democracy supposed to be responding to the needs of the people, there has been no change. So the government is not listening to the people, they are not supporting the people, and people are dying as a result. That's what sparked these massive protests. After decades of discrimination, with no change to political, social, and economic policies, all the things that are causing this brutality and discrimination against race, the people are rising up in protest. So the government hasn't done its job, they haven't helped the people, represented the people, protected the people, and therefore people are protesting. Still giving you a pretty good idea that, okay, they want change, what are we gonna do about it? Nothing. <laughs> Unfortunately, these protests have been met by further violence and oppression from state police and national military. Is that democracy? The features of democracy we discussed in uh, our previous lesson, looking at Australia, uh, being inclusive, supportive, equality, et cetera, et cetera. Is any of that really democracy? No, I wouldn't say so. Those photos don't scream to me democracy. <laughs> You've got one from the Australian protests uh, happening I think that was in Melbourne, Fed Square. You've got a police car burning in the background. I quite like that photo there. That's very artistic. Um, and this photo shows you that this isn't a new issue. You've got protesters from the 1960s uh, with Martin Luther King, and you've got protesters from 2020. So 60 years they've been protesting for racial equality, civil rights. Nothing's happened. In a democracy, that is supposed to change. <laughs> so why hasn't that happened? Well, Watch these two quick little videos here. So three minutes each. Should be easy enough for you guys to watch a three minute video. You might not even get an ad. So America's anti-police protests this weekend. That's from June 1st, 2020. Mr. Telpy's birthday. Um, and then George Floyd protests around the world. So it shows you what's happening in America and shows you the worldwide issue starting off in New Zealand. So you've got a couple of very quick videos for America. One video for China in Hong Kong, and then you're going to be answering two or three questions in your digital notebook. So lesson activities today, complete the following questions in your digital notebook. Uh, question one, in the US and Hong Kong videos, what human rights and individual freedoms are being challenged or they are being denied? So do you see freedom of speech being hurt, being interfered with in either of those videos? You might have to look up a list of human rights. Maybe you've still got that list from year eight, humanities. <laughs> so looking at human rights and individual freedoms, those videos in US and Hong Kong, what do you see being challenged or denied? Question two, what government action or inaction has led to the protests in the USA and Hong Kong? So what are the causes of these protests, of these anti-government uh, protests? And are these systems of government in each of these nations representing the views of the people? So that's really a yes or no question. Are the governments in America and Hong Kong supporting their people with their actions? So if the people are asking for one thing and the government is doing another thing, they're probably not. <laughs> so if you think about that, you can offer your own opinion. 
Uh, and then question three, there have been protests for both of these social causes in Australia. Both the Hong Kong and the US protests have seen support in Australia. We've had protests in Fed Square, in Sydney, uh, in South Australia, Adelaide, where Mr. Tathley's from. Um, so both of these protests are worldwide issues. Should the government in Australia allow these protests to occur? So they're not technically Australian events, but we are protesting for them. Should the government allow protests to occur? Why or why not? Consider human rights and freedoms in a democracy. So do we have the right to protest? And consider the impact of COVID-19. There was a very big issue uh, today, man, yesterday, I would say, <laughs> um, where the protesters of a Black Lives Matter protest in Sydney uh, had to go to the court. They went to the Supreme Court to argue why they were allowed to protest. And the Supreme Court denied that protest based on the grounds that, well, it's a national pandemic. You go outside, you're going to make people sick. So what's more important, human rights or human health? So no wrong answer. I just want you guys to have a think about it and to give me your honest opinion for those three questions. Uh, if you have questions about the questions, please let me know. Otherwise, best of luck, guys. Cheers.